Hello guys, hello girls, we are back and today, uh, do you remember that I was having some trouble with Rust, right? And I was just trying to understand why and I think I understood why I was on Stack Overflow and I found that if I add Rust before I add the, the Git repository, it's not going to install, what makes sense because we don't have the .git folder. Then what I just did, I just did Meteor npm install, and then it is install everything, including Husk. Maybe it was not installed because I use Yarn first, I'm not sure, but now it's here and I was just testing. And as I have this commitment with you to record everything, I'm just showing exactly what I did. The logs here, I just did it. I just didn't record live because I was not sure if that was going to work or not, but I was going to to say if it to explain what uh, didn't work, if that was the case, but in this case it worked. Then you can see here like Husk installation and then I, I did the commit to test and you can see here Husk working. And if you don't remember what is Husk, Husk is a is an NPM uh, module that you can use to run things before or after some like git commands like pre commit post commit and then with this you can have like linked stage is a very nice way when you are working big projects because linked stage is just going to apply this uh, prettier link to whatever to files that are in your staged area then they are not going to be applied to all your files. Then that's that's pretty good because on big project that can take like one minute, maybe two minutes, and then it's it's good. Uh, and that's it. Basically, now it's working. And I even saved here like before I do this, like I try I did the last commit with the sign in sign up from the last video, and it was not working at all. You can see here the logs. We don't have any Husk running here, but here we do have Husk running. I even found that I still have the test, like the test that comes with the repo. We could delete this as well because we are not using this test for now. Let me see if they are still here. Yeah, I deleted here, but I think I didn't delete the files because the test is still running. Or just the command. Yeah, just the command. The command is running test probably because there is some test here. Yeah but I don't have this test, then it's passing because I don't have any test to fail, but I will remove this. Later, you probably can add this again and also just visualize. And that's it. Like if you don't have, uh, if the RHUS configuration is not working, so you, we just try to install any PM again after you do git init. I don't remember exactly if that was the problem, but in any case, I just did this and it is running again. Now, when I do something wrong, let's test this. I didn't test if it's really prevent me from wrong commits. Let me put a log. I think my rules does not allow logs to be committed. And let's try to commit this. I'll try to commit this. Let's see what happens. Uh, can you see? That's the nice part about using like S Link Prettier all together in Husk, because then I can't add any new code to my project that is not in compliance with my S Link rules. Of course, you have a way to add this no verify flag, or even on WebStorm here you can uh, disable Git hooks. But if you set up the hooks, if you know what you are doing, you probably want to to have these hooks enabled and this is very good and also here in this case it's just like the simple the simple log then it's it's fine and uh, let's try to remove it then i can change the package and i don't know what i change in the versions oh, okay i remove the the meter testing okay Or I could remove the meter testing. I'm not sure why this thing goes like this. It should be the opposite, right? It's trying to run something here. Error no test specified. Let's see if I can commit again. 
I will not commit the versions, just the package. Let's see what happens. Yeah, now it's working. This is the old pop-up. Okay. I don't know why it's no test specified. Is this on my config here somewhere? Or maybe I need to have an empty test. Oh, I think I have the test here somewhere. Yeah, I have the test here. That's the error. I can remove from here, but I plan to add some tests later. Then I think I'm going to just create a test here and say, is it zero? Because that's basically what this is expecting, that we don't have an error when you run the test. Let's see if this is enough. I don't want to see this all the time. Yeah, now it's running. Is it zero is okay. Uh, there are no files to be evaluated with uh, these rules because I'm just evaluating JavaScript files because of this config here. But I'm also running an EPM test. And that's it. That's the way that I use to prevent in all my projects to have wrong code. But one last piece before we wrap up here, as I was committing in many videos without running Rusk all the time, maybe I have some bad code. And that's important to understand. As this is just applying these rules to new chains, if you had in the past your project without these rules being enforced by Rusk, it's good to run at least one time like the the script on all the files and I have this squab check here and that's what I'm going to do right now. Then I can check if in the previous videos I didn't add something wrong and I did as you can see. So I need to fix this. Oh, I have consoles. Maybe I will. I just have two consoles. Okay. That's it's good. I was expecting to have consoles everywhere. Okay. This console, I think is the problem. Yeah. Line 16. Uh, let's re remove this and we have the same in the sign up. But if you look to the right, to the left side here, can you see that we have a, a other chains here because we are also not running prior all the time. And then prior now was run like run on all the files. Then that's good. Then all our, our files are correct in terms of prior as well. Then this is important then because it's bad when you change a file that was not pre uh, pre formatted with prettier. And then we have your change plus the format change. And then it's hard to identify which is which. And it's hard to do code reviews and whatever. Now it's working. Okay. My prettier is running and the tests are not running because I don't have any tests. This is the old one. Yeah, this is pretty good. Yeah. I think it's good enough. Let me just run the project so Meteor can update the versions in the right way. And you are going to see what are the real versions that you need to have here. And oh, yeah, I we could remove because this was used only in the tests. Uh, two arguments. Yeah, I don't know what is this error. Yeah, the two validators. The two arguments. I think I just saw this error when I was on Meteor forums. Let me check what is this. Oh, I don't think is this. We are not using grant that it must be something on Meteor. I think I just saw it. someone talk about this in the forums. Uh, must be. I don't know why it's opening the search. I'm trying to search here using Google. Yeah, this is the guy. Uh, I was having a her blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's just some module that is with run old data. Yeah, let me clean up this a little bit because I think the problem here is because I install with yarn later I install with NPM usually use yarn is a little bit faster, but NPM is always improving as well. But let's try this again. Let me install yarn again, just to be sure that design is up to date. Then we can install. Let's remove the node modules first. Then we can install with Meteor. 
We can also do Meteor Reset. We are not using the local database anymore. If you're using the database inside Meteor without using the Mongo URL that I explained in the previous videos, then this is going to clean up your database. The, it's just your local database, but be aware of that. Now let's try Meteor Yarn install and see if everything is working. That's because I deleted the log file. Then it's creating a new log file for us. I hope this install Husk, because if not, that's the problem. Somehow Yarn is not installing Husk properly. Let's see. Oh, Husk, Husk was in the list. But you're going to know anyway, because you're going to commit again. But let's try to run out our project. I don't, I don't think this step is required because that's just going to install Meteor again. But if you already have Meteor, like this is not useful. And also Meteor Reset will do basically what this does as well. Not exactly the same, but almost the same. Then let's see. The first time when you clean all the caches, the first start will be a little bit slower as expected because we have caches. I think we need to also install Bcrypt if it's not in our, but it, that's just a warning. It's not an error. It's just because if you don't have Bcrypt, then Meteor will fall back to a, to the, a version implemented only using JavaScript and not the native implementation. Then it's a little bit slower, but you can do this right now as well. Then this video will be like a cleanup of our setup. I think I had another thing that I left in the previous videos, but if you remember, please comment. Oh, Flip, you said that you're going to improve this or that, and then we can also do this. Let me see if I could remove this Bcrypt error, then our project will be pretty much up to date with our settings. Let's just wait a little bit. Yeah. Now we don't have any warning, we don't have any errors, that's good. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working, it's ugly. We're going to fix this probably in the next video. And, and that's one of the reasons that I love Meteor because we have a lot of developers, like more than half a million of developers using Meteor. Then it's very rare where you are the first one to find a problem. Of course, this is a new release, but even in this case, it's, it's rare and you already have like people trying, people supporting you then it's pretty good because when you don't have this help, it's a little bit challenging to, to overcome some issues. Uh, and I always like when you have these chains in versions or installing things, it's good to do like what this guy is recommending here. This step, I don't think it's required, but these steps are good. Then you kind of reset your project, but you need to be careful with this one because maybe you have a very specific version, then this can change a little bit. But if you are using Git, you have this file there as well, then you can roll back if you need it. Okay, we have yarn lock here and we're going to add this new yarn lock and let's try for the third time just to be sure it's really running. And you can always on WebStorm go to Git and you can, oh, it's running because when it's here, the commits are right there, but you can go to console and you can see everything that WebStorm is doing. This is good to learn Git, but it's not very good because WebStorm uses a lot of configurations here. But it's good, at least you can see for sure exactly what was the command used by WebStorm. When you do anything in the in the Git area here, then you can you can always learn. And that's good, but be careful because you see a lot of things that are not required just because the system is trying to do in the best way possible. But anyway, Husk is here, it's running, everything is working. Then let's push. We have a lot of tests here that we are doing and thank you guys. In the next video, I think we are going to fix the sign up because we are not showing who is there. See you.